everyone. This is Melissa, and I'm the talkative introvert. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. If you're not, I got some news for you guys. It's not terrible. I'm not dying or anything. It's just more of an inconvenience, honestly. And as you can tell from the title of the episode, I recently got diagnosed with hypothyroidism. It sucks, but I'm glad I found out because a lot of what I'm going through now makes a whole lot of sense. Anyways, I wanted to share this story in hopes that it may help someone realize like, hey, maybe I should go see my doctor and maybe some of the things I'm going through isn't normal and there's actually something wrong. Maybe there's a solution to some of the issues I'm going through and I actually don't have to live through these inconveniences, you know? So I'll talk about what hypothyroidism is and what prompted me to go seek answers. So what is it? What is hypothyroidism? According to the Mayo Clinic website, hypothyroidism or an underactive thyroid is a condition in which your thyroid gland doesn't produce enough of certain crucial hormones. Hypothyroidism may not cause noticeable symptoms in the early stages. Over time, untreated hypothyroidism can cause a number of health problems such as obesity, joint pain, infertility, and heart disease. So what are the symptoms? The website goes on to say the signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism vary depending on the severity of the hormone deficiency. Problems tend to develop slowly, often over a number of years. At first, you may barely notice the symptoms of hypothyroidism, such as fatigue and weight gain, or you may simply attribute them to getting older. But as your metabolism continues to slow, you may develop more obvious problems. Then they list the following symptoms. Fatigue, increased sensitivity to cold, constipation, dry skin, weight gain, puffy face, hoarseness, muscle weakness, elevated blood cholesterol level, muscle aches, tenderness, and stiffness, pain, stiffness, or swelling in your joints, heavier than normal or regular menstrual periods, thinning hair, slowed heart rate, depression, impaired memory, enlarged thyroid gland, goiter. And then this website didn't list this, but I also learned that you can have thyroid-induced ADHD. So obviously everyone's body is unique to them, but I'll share what I was experiencing. So the biggest issue I've been having for quite some time now is my hair. It's very thin and brittle and I'm definitely losing hair, unfortunately. Um, So when I was younger, I had a lot of hair and it was really big and super unmanageable. And my hair is still unmanageable now, but It was just like huge back then. And one time when I went to the Philippines, my family tried to do these different hair relaxer treatments to make my hair straight and smooth, but it didn't work and it didn't do anything. There is nothing really they can do to fix it or fix it. Um, Quotes. Looking back, I really wish they didn't try to do that. I wish they just learned how to deal with my hair. I'm just now learning about the curly girl method and how to deal with wavy hair. My family and Filipinos in general um, just value straight hair, which is super annoying because I love curly hair. I wish I had really curly hair. There's people in my family that have curly hair. My brother has curly hair and I love it. I think it's amazing. Like I don't understand why they tried so hard to make my hair straight. Anyways, towards the end of college, my hair started to thin and it just got progressively worse. And I just associated it with age because my mom and my aunts all have really thin hair. Like you can see their scalp. It's super, super thin. So I thought it was just hereditary and normal. But my mom mentioned that her hair didn't start thinning until much later in life, like probably I don't know, 50s or something. Because I, looking back, I do remember her having like pretty nice thick hair. So it really didn't start happening till later on. My mom actually mentioned my hair a few times, like in the past couple of years. But my mom kind of just tells me a lot of things, honestly. She's very opinionated and has a lot of criticism. So sometimes I just zone those out. And when she's criticizing me, I just, you know, don't really... uh let it soak in. But looking back, she definitely noticed a few things that were off about me. Uh, But back to my hair, it was thinning and getting worse year after year. It's been a really big issue for me because it really impacts my self-esteem. My hair is a big deal to me and it has been really stressing me out seeing it get thinner. So I started Googling and watching YouTube videos of women dealing with thinning hair and what causes thinning hair, how to combat thinning hair, etc. I kept running across women who have picos or 
polycystic ovarian syndrome. The women talked a lot about infertility, which ran in my family as well. So I wonder if, if maybe I was infertile too. So initially I thought maybe I had that. Um, but then in addition to my thinny hair, I was growing very unwanted hair. I started getting chin hairs and they're thick, like super thick. And it's very, it's very like coarse in, it's not a lot. Like I'm not growing a beard, but there's just like, you know, a couple here and there. Um, and a little mustache, unfortunately, which I, again, associated all of this to aging because some women I know were like, that's normal when you get older. But this was all happening in my mid to late twenties. So like, I'm only 30 and you know, 30 is not that old, guys. It really isn't. Like, my dad lived up to 80. 30 is not that old. But my hair isn't really the only thing that made me want to go see the doctor because I was thinking, like, you know, people are always saying, like, try keratin or try biotin or try, you know, different vitamin supplements. Maybe you're lacking in these, like, minerals and vitamins in your daily diet. So that's why your hair is thinning. So I'm not, like, the super healthiest person. Like I do try to make sure I eat healthy, but you know, there's some vegetables I just don't like. So I just didn't think anything was really wrong with me just yet. But then I started having issues with my period. I started noticing how irregular my periods were. I switched to a non-hormonal birth control over a year ago just to see what my body would be like without the hormones. I've been on hormonal birth control since I was like 18. So what is that? 12 years. So I was just curious to see what my body was like in its natural state. And I know there's a lot of like side effects to hormonal birth control. And just, I was just really curious, you know, like what my body is like just naturally without all that stuff. And oh my God, you guys, like my periods were the absolute worst. I know periods aren't fun, but man, I forgot what it's like to have a period. I haven't had a period in almost 12 years and it was, it's just so, it was so unbearable. I have mad respect for people, um, or not people, for women who didn't go on birth control and are dealing with this like month after month. And I have mad respect for my high school slash middle school self for going through this every single month it is absolutely awful. And then I think my doctor was just saying, you know, you're having your period for the first time in like 12 years. So it's something about like shedding the lining of something, whatever. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember health at all that much. So it's just, oh, it's just, it was terrible, but it was a good thing because, because switching to a non-hormonal birth control helped me discover how irregular my periods are. So sometimes I would skip months. Then when I did have it, it would either last four days. One time it lasted eight days. Then sometimes it was like super light. Then it was extremely heavy. And it is normal to have irregular periods when you first switch your birth control. But I was told that it would go back to normal by like the third month or something. And I was on the non-hormonal birth control for like over a year. So definitely not normal. It definitely did not revert back to how it was in high school. Like it was extremely irregular. Then after my eight day long period and stressing over my hair, I was like, yeah, I need to talk to my doctor. This is not cool. Like, I don't understand what's going on. I'm having all these weird things happen to me. Um, so I scheduled an appointment with my doctor back in early February. I explained my thinning hair and the facial hair and my regular periods. And she said it sounded a lot like Pico's, but that she wouldn't know for sure until she ran some blood tests. And I don't like going to the hospital, so I avoid it as much as possible, which she noticed. So she just ordered to check for everything. And I can't remember, but they took like six or eight vials of blood. It was quite a bit. Then I had to play the waiting game. It took like two weeks to get all the results back and they were kind of just like 
trickling in one by one. So I would get like notified, like I would get an email every time a test result came in and I was just growing super impatient. So every time a test came in, I would Google how to read the results. And at first everything was looking super good, like no real issues because my doctor also said like maybe I need to go see a dermatologist. You know, maybe it's not PCOS, maybe it's not something like you know, as serious as that. And I just need to go see a dermatologist. But again, like she needed the blood test. So, okay, whatever. Um, so yeah, so they were trickling in. I was Googling, Googling every single one to figure out what they mean. And then I finally noticed my T3 and T4 levels were not in the normal range. I don't remember what they were, but when you get your test results back, there's like a little like note like where the normal range is supposed to be. And so that's how I was able to tell like they weren't where they're supposed to be for my age and whatever. So when I was researching about T3 and T4 hormones, that's when I learned about hypo and hyperthyroidism. So hypo, like I was saying earlier, it's an underactive thyroid. So I wasn't making enough T3 and T4, whereas hyper is you're making too much. But when I discovered, you know, hypothyroidism, it started to help me connect the dots because I started looking into it. I started watching videos. You know, I, my usual self, like I just went down a Google rabbit hole about like everything about your thyroid and what it causes and all this stuff and, you know, watching people who are going through it. And it's kind of crazy because looking back at some of the comments my mom says or some of the comments like people say to me, you know, people close to me, they would notice when something changed about me, but I never really thought much about it. They were just commenting here and there and they weren't like necessarily positive or negative comments, just an observation they had. For example, I started to get cold really easily, which is really weird for me. My cousin Casey would sometimes say like, dang, you get cold so easily now, or what's happening? Why do you get cold so easily? And every time she said that, I just would joke around and be like, well, I'm just getting old because I am nearing 30. So it's like, you know, I'm just getting old. Maybe that's just like what happens when you get older because my mom gets cold super easily, but she's also like four nine and like a hundred pounds or something, but she didn't used to be like that. Um, And that's a normal thing. Like my aunt is like that too, but they're like significantly older than me. So I don't know. I just didn't think much about it. I just thought I was just getting older, but it's actually a symptom of hypothyroidism, getting cold easily. Then back to my mom, I mentioned her earlier and how I just dismissed her comments, but she noticed a lot of things. I think it's just the way she, she goes about it is what irritates me. But she did notice that I'm always tired. She noticed my hair. She noticed my quick waking. Although that could just be her being your stereotypical Filipino mom. So I definitely did like just dismiss that comment. Um, but she would always say like, you're too young to get tired so easy or you're too young to have thin hair. She even noticed my terrible short term memory and would always say you're too young to be this forgetful. Because I actually have amazing long-term memory. But yeah, my short-term memory is crap. Like, I'll get up to get something from the kitchen and I'll completely forget what I was getting in the kitchen. Which, I don't know. I, th- I feel like a lot of people are like that. But uh, she she noticed it and she kept saying that. And that's another thing with, like, hypothyroidism, I guess. But yeah, it's just the way she says it. It just sounds so rude. But, you know, my mom noticed something and she said something about it. So sometimes the criticism isn't criticism. They're just observations. And the biggest thing Brandon and my husband noticed was the fatigue. Like I'm always tired and I always want to take naps, but also who doesn't like naps? So of course I'm just like, I'm just lazy and I like to sleep. Like who is it? I didn't think it was abnormal. Then he also kept getting these suggestions on Instagram about ADHD, and he kept sharing reels to me that were extremely relatable. And that's when I learned that there's such a thing as hypothyroidism-induced ADHD. 
So it goes beyond like the physical stuff and can really mess with you mentally if left untreated. And that scared me too. Like, like not only is it impacting like my self image with my hair and the facial hair and like all and the waking and all this stuff, but it's also like mentally, you know, like the ADHD and the short term memory and stuff like that. It can even cause like depression, which I don't think I have that, but you know, if I, if left untreated, it could possibly turn to that, you know? Oh, and another thing, the hoarseness thing. I have a very hoarse, like throughout this whole recording this episode and any episode I do, I'm constantly drinking water. Like I have no issue reaching that 64 ounce mark that, you know, doctors and whoever suggests because my voice is always hoarse and very, uh, raspy. And I do drink water, guys, and I try to clear my throat, but it's just, I don't know if that's natural or if it's the thyroid, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, anyways, um, so after two weeks, I met with my doctor again. She confirmed it and said I have hypothyroidism and that she wanted to start me on hormone therapy right away. So hormone therapy is basically taking pills on a daily basis. That's really Yeah, because when she said hormone therapy, I'm like, oh my God, what does that mean? But it's literally taking a pill every day. Um, So the approach is different for everyone, but she started me on a high dosage. And what she said was that I'm going to start you high because you're young and you can handle it. And I'm like, sure. I'm not sure how I feel about that statement, but I'm just going to roll with it. So what usually happens that your doctor will recommend a certain dosage for you to take daily Then every six weeks or so, you go in and do blood work so the doctor can analyze your thyroid hormone levels and then adjust your medication accordingly. So once you get the right dosage, you only really need to go provide blood work, I think like once a year, just to make sure your dosage is still working for you. So it's just really like the first year or so um, that you'll be doing like the the regular you know, six week intervals of blood work, but then it'll it'll go down to annually. Cause that was like one of my concerns, like, man, do I have to go in all the time (laughs) to do blood work? But it's really just for like the first stage of the hormone therapy. And it's honestly just like this itty bitty pill too. It's so tiny. I was like, this, this is all I need. This, this tiny thing is going to help me fix all these problems. (laughs) The process is is pretty simple, but of course I wanted to know the side effects. Like, how do I know it's working? How should I be feeling? Stuff like that. And she mentioned that um, I should have more energy and not feel so fatigued all the time, but I might get jittery. My heart rate may be higher than usual. Um, I might feel more hungry than usual because it'll impact my metabolism. Another thing that my Mayo Clinic didn't list is that hypothyroid, well, I guess it kind of says it, but hypothyroidism can cause a low metabolism, which I guess is why they listed like obesity and and weight gain in their symptoms because it impacts your metabolism. She also mentioned I might lose more hair, but after a while it'll start coming back. So it's going to look bad before it gets better which I'm not happy about because I already don't have hair. I mean, I have hair. Okay, I'm I'm exaggerating, but not a lot of hair. And then she's telling me I'm going to lose more hair before I get my hair back. Like, I was not happy about that. But, you know, I watched (laughs) more videos about that. Like, uh, I tried to watch videos of people who started on the hormone therapy and they they all kind of said similar things that like, yeah, they lost a bunch of hair, but then they started seeing regrowth after like, like a few months. So not anytime soon. So at the time of this recording, it's been probably, a uh, let's see, almost two months, maybe a month and a half. Yeah. I would say a month and a half, um, since I've started on the hormone therapy so I, I I did notice some things, like some things were, you know, getting a little better. Like I'm not as fatigued before with my fatigue, which I didn't even think it was a thing. Honestly, I just thought, I don't know, I was just a lazy person, I guess. But I used to have really, really hard 
times waking up. Like I made a joke with my friend Bailey because she said she's always late to work or whatever. And I'm like, dude, my work is literally like 10 steps away and I'm still late because I can't get up early. And I I just didn't really think much of that because I thought that was pretty normal. You know, like I would still get my eight hours of sleep, but just want to sleep in. Like, I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to get up. I just want to lay in bed and stay in bed forever. And I would literally wait until like the very last second until I have to get up and actually like log into work. And I just thought that was normal. And I used to take a lot of naps, especially on the weekends. Like I would take a lot of naps and I would just get so tired and like some weekends, you know, Brandon and I will get up, do our, do chores or whatever, do grocery or do something in the morning, eat breakfast or lunch. And then I would want to just immediately take a nap. Like I was just so exhausted from all of that. And it's not even like half the day yet. And I'm already tired. So I think that's the biggest change I've noticed is that I, and I really do have more energy. Like I've been like just this week alone. Um, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I wake up early anyways, cause I take a fitness class. So I literally force myself because I'm paying for it. I have to take the class. If I don't go to the class, they charge me for it. So it's very, um, I don't know what the word is for it, but like, I, I have to do it or else I'm wasting money basically. And like, I don't like wasting money. So I do make myself get up and do that. But that's because I have something scheduled for that day. But on Tuesday, Thursday, I don't actually work out. Um, but this week I was able to get up early. So I still set my, <laughs> so I still set my alarm. So I wake up the same time every single day. But on Tuesday and Thursdays, those are the days where I like sometimes I'm late to work because I just want to stay in bed all morning until the very last minute. But this week I was able to like actually get up and get ready and walk link and make myself breakfast. And even Brandon's like, why are you up so early? And I'm like, I don't know, just didn't feel like sleeping in, I guess. And I wanted to walk link. And today, like today I'm off. And I didn't have a workout this morning and I just, I just got up. I walked a link. I went to wash my car and now I'm doing this podcast. And then later I'm probably going to do some crafts and clean the house and stuff. And it's only 10. (laughs) So I've got a lot done and I still have a lot of energy still. And that's like, honestly been such a great thing. Like that's probably my favorite thing about this whole, whole hormone therapy. And honestly, It could be the hormone therapy or it could just be like a placebo effect. Either way, I definitely do get a lot more done and I feel more productive and more accomplished, I guess. I don't know. I get a lot more done and I get to do a lot more things, like fun things, because I get so much done now. Um, But then like the other side effects, like I do notice the high heart rate. I have a Fitbit. And I did check to see if it's more elevated than usual because it does record like your heart rate and it is slightly higher and I can feel it. Like I can tell when my heart rate is higher. Um, It's not as bad. Like it was pretty bad, I think earlier, but it's not as bad now. I don't know. I don't have my Fitbit on right now, so I can't tell, but uh, that's something I noticed, but it doesn't like impact me negatively. Like I don't know what having the heart high heart rate does, I guess, physically to you. But it is it is a thing. As for my hair, it's still thin. But like all the other people are saying, they're, they don't see changes until like months later. So I don't know if, if and when it'll get better. But I do know that I am losing hair. Like I just took a shower before doing this podcast and today's wash day in case you guys don't know a lot of women don't wash their hair every day and I'm sure men also it's uh so today is wash day and yeah it's definitely I mean it's not like a huge amount but it's it's noticeable so I'm not like losing hair in like wads of hair like 
clumps and clumps of hair. It's just, it's just higher than usual, but it's not that bad, I guess. But I did take pictures. Um, my doctor had me take pictures of my hair to show like the spots that are like balding and what it looks like to help her determine. Cause I guess like the way your hair thins and the way it's balding deter- can help determine like what is the cause. So I do have before pictures. So I'm hoping in a few months, maybe I'll take some new pictures and see if anything's changed, if there's a difference or not. But so far, that's really it. It's just really my energy, my high heart rate. Um, I did, I was jittery for a little bit and I did notice that because my hands, like my hands are pretty, like, you know, that like TikTok video where, um, it's like the video where it shows how shaky someone's hand is and they tell you what their their profession is. And so I was just like, after like seeing that video, like I was just looking at my hand. I'm like, hmm, it's pretty still actually. But now it's like, it's a little bit jittery, but it's not, I don't know. It's not that bad. It's just a tiny bit. So it's not like these side effects that I'm having, at least the negative ones aren't really all that bad. But yeah, it's just like, yeah, the hair, um, the heart rate. And the energy. So even though not much has changed yet, I feel like I'm actually in a better state of mind now. When I first found out, I was just super bummed. I didn't really have the motivation to put much effort into my work for the rest of the day. And I was just super sullen, like all evening. Like I just, I was just so upset because I don't know, like you don't want anything to be wrong with it. And even though it's not, it's not like cancer or like, something like crazy and debilitating. It was just like really sad still that, you know, that something's wrong. And then now I have to take a pill every day. Like I was reading about it and, you know, a lot of people end up just having that for the rest of their lives. Like some people are able to change their diet and their lifestyle so that they don't have to be on the pill. Um, And I have to do more research on that to see like, you know, how that is. But a lot of people just, you know, keep on taking it for the rest of their lives. And that sucks because then it made me really think about like, you know, when you fill out medical forms or yeah, medical forms that you have to list out your medication that you're taking. And I was just thinking, I know this like seems so simple and kind of dumb, but I was just thinking like, man, I can't put not applicable anymore. I have to actually put something down now and I have to actually like think about, you know, how this can interact with other medication, how it can impact my health in other ways. And I just really didn't want to have to take a pill, I guess, or take medication every day. Cause like my dad, before he died, took like 18 different pills every single day. And I just thought like, man, I don't want to live that kind of life. But here I am, 30 and taking this. But I'm trying not to be super negative about it. And after I let myself just be sullen and whatever, um, after I got out of that like doom and gloom state and started taking the medication, I felt grateful that at least I did something and that I acknowledged that something was wrong and that I got the answers I needed. So I'm trying to take a more positive approach to this because it really is better than the alternative because like you know i mentioned earlier hypothyroidism left untreated can lead to other complications and in severe cases i guess death apparently so i'm glad i'm doing something about it now so i hope this was helpful for you and if not i hope it was at least interesting to learn about but moral of the story is like listen to your body And listen to the people closest to you because sometimes they know you better than you do. And if people are recognizing something that's off or different about you, maybe that's your sign to listen to them and to listen to your body. And maybe it's time to see your doctor or, you know, seek help because there could be a a solution to some issues you're going through and you don't actually have to go through them. You never know. All right. Thanks for making it to the end. If you enjoy what you hear, want to stay up to date on the show, please follow me on Facebook and or on Instagram. You can also check out my website at the talkative introvert podcast.com. All the information will be on there as well as in the show notes. If you want to help support the show, please review and rate the podcast and share it with your friends and family. 
Thanks so much. And I'll talk to you guys in the next episode.